In this module, we're going to talk about day one. Now, day one is not a literal thing. It's more of a metaphor. It's this idea of how you should approach each day of your job. Now, the hard part is when you get to that eighth week of the summer or when you get into the end of the season or just in general, the, the dog days of strength conditioning, the more we can tap into that day one butterflies, the more that we can feel the the power of change of seasons, the better we're going to be the long term. You think about it, your overall impression and evaluation is going to be the aggregate, not necessarily these small moments of what you do on a repeated day basis. So looking at this from you're the product of what you repeatedly do. So being a strength conditioning coach is approaching each day the same way you would approach day one of any job. So you're a strength coach. You are working in the trenches. One of the things that you realize very quickly, it is Groundhog's Day. It is chop wood, carry water every single day. It's getting in early, setting up, organizing, coaching your sessions, doing all the work in between, the programming, the one-on-ones, the, the meetings with coaches, the meetings with administration, another session, another session, another session, going out to practice, doing some movement prep, maybe working with some injured guys or girls, and then going back into the weight room and finishing up whatever it is you got that given day, maybe doing some more weight sessions, maybe doing a post-practice lift, and then getting it up and repeat, repeat, repeat. The redundancy and then this the absolute monotony of strength conditioning is enough to overwhelm you. It's enough to just go ahead and drive you back crazy. Now, you can approach that as, all right, I'm going to be very pragmatic with how I approach work every single day. I'm going to make sure that I'm playing the long game. I'm running a marathon. I'm going to run a, a seven-minute mile as opposed to a four-minute mile and then burn out mile two. Now, on the other end, what were you like on that first day of your job? Probably a little anxious, a little excited. You were sucking down some coffees, whatever you needed to do to get ready to go for work. Now, there's a downside to trying to maintain that, but less about trying to look at this from how you're approaching every single day as day one, more about feeling that feeling when you walked into work for the first time that you did all the process of getting your degree, maybe your master's degree, you did multiple internships, you worked at these other jobs in order to have this opportunity and you feel this certain rush of like, I'm climbing that mountain, I've reached some sort of milestone. Tap into that. Because I'm gonna tell you this, the thing that they'll never tell you about in strength conditioning, I felt it, every single strength coach I know has felt it, is that feeling of, is this it? The climb, the, we just basically lived the montage scene from every single Rocky movie. And now we've got to the proverbial mountaintop. We're not there where we want to be, but the reality of the hustle, the, the actual grind, the, the crucible of going through becoming a strength coach and then actually becoming it and then realizing it's a job. It's the next 30 to 40 years of getting up at 4 a.m., working from 5 a.m. to 8 p.m., and then doing that five, six days in a row. And doing that for multiple weeks on end. And doing that nonstop making 30 to 40K a year, probably for the majority of your career. That is enough to break you down and say, what's the point? You know, and what I'm telling you right now is don't lose sight of the sacrifices you've made and lose sight of the reason why you're a strength coach. Right? What can you control? You can work out, you can read, you can Go into all the great moments you have. You have a great opportunity to develop a kinship and a bond with your staff members and your coaches and your athletes like no one else in any other profession in the world. you got to tap into that. you got your seasons, and that's the big part of the book. We talk about this from the season. It's a new opportunity. It's a new beginning almost every single three months. you got the off-season. you got the in-season. you got the post-season. Every single phase has its nuance. It has its stress. It has its things that you just absolutely grow to despise over time. Sitting there watching practice for multiple hours on end. If you like watching practice as a strength coach and you just generally really want to be out there watching people play your sport, maybe you're going to go crazy over time. I just look at this from the standpoint of like, ah, man, this is my time to develop myself and grow and get better. That's where you start to tap into there is goods and bads. I hated going to practice. I absolutely hated it. 
I can't stand it. I know some coaches who like to go to practice. But for me, that was my opportunity to really commit myself to developing. Get back in the resources, books, courses, things that I really genuinely enjoy doing. I like to train my absolute ass off in season. I thought it was my best opportunity to get the best training I possibly did, could do because I had the most uninterrupted time to do it. And I was at the facility more. Off season, everything kind of puts on a back burner, right? It's all about the athletes. It's all about putting them at the biggest focal point to develop them as much as humanly possible. That's my in season. And that's where I just start to wrap my head around. The seasonality is I'm going to emotionally, emotionally gear myself up for the long haul and understanding the priority in that part of the year. But it's the same thing as I walked in day one. Day one is about making a really good impression. The in season, the off season, the post season, the discretionary periods, all of that has its big focal point, right? I need to make a great impression on day one, but I also need to make a great impact in the off season. I also need to make sure that I take care and develop myself maybe in the in season or during discretionary periods. And I look at that as the, the metaphor for how you survive the monotony and the redundancy of strength conditioning. Because the burnout is incredible. Like the actual idea of you doing this for the next 40 years or 50 years of your life is overwhelming. It's almost as if I'm just going to do this for a period of time and then get out. Well, it doesn't have to be that, especially with the sacrifice you've made and the, my, the financial and emotional and physical commitment you made to get this far. To say that, wow, I just don't want to do make 35K working 60 to 80 hour weeks and getting up at 4 a.m., getting home at 8 p.m. for the rest of my life within the first six months to a year. Now, I get it. It's, it, it's, a, it's overwhelming. But if you can carpetmentalize each part of that year and say, okay, there's really great aspects of this time of the year. In season, I hate practice, but I love lifting. I love learning. I love reading. I like development lifts. I like working with our in-season athletes that are playing 60, 70 snaps and trying to find creative ways to get them better. I like to work with our injured athletes and get them better. I like to communicate more with our athletic training and go, hey, what do we need to do to get this person back on the field in the weight room? Same thing in the off-season. It's my time. It's my time to really go. Maybe I don't necessarily have as much time to work out and train as I would want or read or go through continuing education, but I do all that stuff to be better for that next off-season that I'm more physically and mentally and emotionally prepared to be able to really have a great off season. And it's, I'm training now for that. I'm training to be out on my feet for six, seven hours a day, demonstrating, making sure that everything is crisp and polished, that it's organized, the programs are tight. I am now gearing up for my end season, which is the off season. And discretionary periods, okay, it's time to recharge. It's funny, when anyone who's married in strength conditioning you probably feel like you're the tale of two different people. You go home and you're a complete zombie. But at work, you're this charismatic, very extroverted, very outgoing person. And I think over time, you realize your way to manage is to just basically find a way to recharge that battery by closing it off. Some people are just not constantly extroverted. But I think for the most of us, we have a really great instinct about knowing when to turn the switch on and off. In fact, I talk so much in my life, it's better for me to listen at home. It's better for me to be just an actual, an observer and a supporter and someone that not constantly being looked to for answers that just tell me what to do and I need to do it. But those are survival tactics that you look through in terms of strength conditioning of any profession that you look through, hey, I want to approach every single day in the best possible way I can. And it has a different meaning depending on the time of the year. So the take home from this is thinking about this as you would day one. What were you going to do to be successful? What, what feelings did you have? What, what was keeping you up at night the night before when you're going to work? What anxieties? What, what that like feeling of like, man, this is a lot of really interesting notions in my mind that I'm thinking about how I'm going to make a great impression. But why not approach every single day like that? Why not approach the entire offseason, entire in-season, discretionary, postseason? Why not have that game plan for every single part of the year and every single day you come in, depending on that part of the year, and make the biggest impact you possibly can? Module tasks. Think about what is your actual objectives, depending on the time of the year. Like, what is a good day in terms of off-season? What's a good day in terms of in-season? What's a good day during postseason or discretionary? Define what a good day is. And then from there, start to create a checklist, to go through those, day, go through those checklists and say, at the end of the day, did I meet these benchmarks? And then from there, you can have a really good diagnostic if you're having a good day or a bad day. And then from there, you're just trying to accrue as many good days as possible. When you get that feeling of, I don't want to do this anymore, I'm burnt out, you start to go ahead objectively, is this something in the moment that I'm reacting to? 
or do I aggregate more good days than I do bad days? And that's really the only way you can really quantify this. It's the only way you can make sure that you're making the best decision. Because when you do make that decision to go, probably not much looking back. And it's a lot of sacrifice to get to that point. So day one, think about it as a metaphor for how you're approaching every single day and not making prudent and rational decisions based off a little bit of fear that the rest of your life is going to be just unsustainable and unenjoyable. It's not just in the moment you have these feelings. So think about that for the long time.